Hello everybody, my name is Hammock. Today I'm going to talk to you about the viability of the Eureka effect in Highlander. This comes from the Meteor Match Changes and a few weeks to really test out how things work. I've previously made a video talking about the gunmetal changes to Eureka effect and how to use it effectively. This video will be similar in that I'll go into detail as to what has changed and what are the best tactics. Eureka effect is one of my favourite weapons in TF2 and hopefully you'll see it in better light. The stats of the weapon at this video's creation are as follows. Press your reload key to choose to teleport to spawn or your exit teleporter. Minus 50% metal cost when constructing or upgrading teleporters. Construction hit speed boost decreased by 50%. 20% less metal from pickups and dispensers. I'd also like to add the teleporter's build cost has been lowered to 50 metal. As a result, the cost is 25 metal to build the teleporter with the Eureka effect. This is a huge buff compared to the previous Eureka, and makes it not only decent, but viable. Now I have a few strats that are already effective with Eureka, and some newer ones that can be used for cheese. But before I go into the strats, I'll iterate a tactic that's the main function of this weapon, the Eureka Rotation. The Eureka Rotation is the act of setting up a teleport exit, and then teleporting back to spawn to get metal. You can teleport back without building an entrance, and use your replenished metal supply. I've named it Eureka Rotation because you actively rotate between spawn and your exit instead of needing an ammo pack. Now the strats I've perfected are named Escape Effect, Infestation, Hard Setup, Advanced Mobility, and <laughs> The Landmine. I figured some cool names were in order. I mean, spies have weird stabbing names, right? The fuck is a Maladol stab? Escape effect is setting up a hold of Eureka and using the teleport to spawn function as a means to back out. In holds such as upward and bandwater first, there is potential to be sniped when backing out on foot. By using the Eureka effect, you can teleport out and set up on second as soon as you know things aren't going well. The upside of this strat is that you can set up forward holds and bases much faster and continue to keep territory. The downsides, however, are getting killed during the lengthy animation and backing out too early, giving up potential time. Basically, it's well worth using if you're afraid of their sniper, but communicate your escape with your team or you'll have a bad time. Infestation is the act of setting up a teleporter exit behind enemy lines and using the Eureka rotations to set up a base. Because of the metal supplied by your spawn, you do not need any ammo packs to set up. You can find an opportunistic position for your team and begin pumping out soldiers. I call it infestation because it's similar to a spider setting up their web and producing murderous creatures. If you've ever played Two Fort or Barnblitz Second, then you know that a lone engineer is a vile creature. Hard setup is using Eureka rotations in a Highlander stronghold and sustaining it for a long time. The key difference between hard setup and infestation is that infestation is dangerous because of added teammates and unpredictability. Hard setup allows an engineer to keep a consistent sentry hold on position and use Eureka to stave off metal starvation. In holds such as Badwater Third, where your dispenser is used for spy blocking and your teleporter is generally unused, I've been using Eureka to upgrade my sentry and replenish my supplies after backing out from first and second without a dispenser. A dispenser carried with you makes setting up a lot easier, hence why I call that an easy setup. However, even with the dispenser set up at stairs, it means crossing a boiler sightline that, while should be covered, is a potential risk. Make no mistake though, the hard setup is an equal risk. The teleport is distinctive and loud, so a smart team will bomb your gun after a rotation. Use this however as an alternative to keep your metal stocks high after pushes and give yourself another escape. Advanced Mobility is aptly named because it's like rocket jumping, cloak and double jumping. It gives Engineer a unique form of mobility. Engineer can freely teleport to his exit without an active entrance. An active teleporter makes a continuous noise and creates bright team colored light. If you want to keep up a hidden teleporter, leaving it as an exit helps it blend in. You can simply drop a 25 metal exit and let the enemy move up or hope they didn't see you sneak behind. I would advise only using advanced mobility when setting up teleporters is difficult or not as necessary. Denying your team a teleporter to the front line is a significant loss and should only be considered on certain 5 CP. However, if you believe the reward outweighs the loss, then take to the flanks and give that medic a panic attack. Nice going, now the most interesting of them all. I personally believe this to be a bug, but it still hasn't been patched. I deliberately waited before posting this in case it was a bug, but it seems to be left in. This is the landmine. Surprise, motherfucker! 
Now I presume as engineers you know the art of telefragging. If you take a teleporter that leads inside an enemy, they die. Instantly. Now with the Eureka event, you can telefrag enemies without the need for an entrance. You may in fact be able to telefrag with the teleporter spawn in a humiliation round, but I haven't conclusively found out. With this feature, you can place a sneaky exit somewhere, a landmine, and predictably frag a passing enemy. I recommend being distant so they don't see or hear the distinctive teleport animation, and I recommend building an exit near props or height disparity so they don't notice they've walked onto it. Now, after further testing, I found that the Telefrag hitbox is much larger than anticipated. You merely need to be adjacent to the exit in order to be in a range of damage. This means you can be more creative with landmines and hide them around corners. There is a lot of potential for landmines, so I bring up an important question. Is Eureka Effect too powerful for Highlander? I certainly love this wrench and would hate to see it go, but with these tricks, it may be too difficult to anticipate. As an engineer, you could drop a medic with a sneaky teleporter, and while that is the talent of the player and the ignorance of the target, <coughs> spy, is this too gimmicky and broken for a competitive environment? I'm going to play it safe and say it's worth letting the leagues decide. If you think any different and want your effect to stay, place a comment below or contact league admins. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. I'm the mad scientist Hammock, and I'll see you later.